Welcome to another edition of Lone Star Brahma's Inside the Bullpen, brought to you by Fine Life Realty. And now, here's your host, Nick Merritt. Inside the Bullpen is back with our 25th episode of the season. Glad to have you on board for another ride. Nick Merrick, Walt Ruff, Chad Seward here bringing all the news and analysis from Brahmaland. And right off the bat, obviously, sadly, the season's come to a close. Uh, we kind of discussed that uh, prior to the last podcast episode that it very well could happen. And uh, it's off-season time officially in Brahmaland. So we, we will put to bed uh, this what? season. No, uh, I, I wish wish it wasn't true. Oh, wish buddy. it wasn't true, but obviously it was a great year overall for uh, all the fans, all the players, all the sponsors, all the families, everybody uh, who made this season a very special one yet again uh, in North Richland Hills. We very much appreciate that. But let's just fire right away. We're on a time limit. Keep it short. Uh, let's revisit some of our predictions from okay. what we had this year. Before Walt came here, uh -huh. and uh, I'm glad he's here now, but Absolutely. Uh, Chad and I were having to banter about our predictions. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was your record and overall? Uh, I thought on the, on the record I said 40 wins, first place. Uh, Howard Stone says I made some smart aleck remark about 60 wins in first place. <laughs> I think that was a little – off color, 40 wins in first place was my mark. What would you say? I said 35 wins in second place was mine. So basically you got the wins basically right. It was 39, and they came in second, and I got the second place right. So if we just joined forces there, we would have We were nailed close. It. We were really <laughs> close. Okay, and then. But still, both of our records, successful years, how they turn out, successful year. I would say so at least. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. If you're winning, you know. Almost sixty percent of your games—that's pretty pretty solid, and right. uh, that puts you in the playoffs most years. Um, but then Walt, Walt Ruff from Philly. Then we joined, had a baby. Joined our crew. We had a baby. <laughs> he joined. He joined our crew, and uh, his first entrance. What did we do? Three players to watch. We did one. I think maybe the second episode. I think we were on. Yeah, the first episode may have been just getting to know Walt. I don't know. Is this kid gonna stick around? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get to know Walt before we cut him. Yeah, right? exactly that. Right? No, but uh, congrats on completing your first year, Walt. Thank you, um, thank you. No, I remember what, what it was. We did three players to that we're each going to watch. We did that after the uh, first preseason game. Oh, you're right. So that we had you're seen right. a little bit. So yes. for me, I'll go first. I had three players on my list. Um, I had Berard and Nelly, and I had him. <laughs> Uh, Great pick. Great pick. Exceptional and, pick. It, yeah, absolutely. And the only reason that <laughs> I picked him was he stood out so far and above everybody else at those preseason games with his speed. He yep. was out of control. You so, said uh, we referred to him as Sonic. Sonic. And you said you said uh, he I, – I don't need to even watch the other 23 teams in the league. He is the fastest guy, and I think that still holds true. I think that yeah. definitely holds true. <laughs> okay, then I had uh, Marty Melberg from Sweden. And, uh, yeah, he did good. He was solid. What did he end up with? Sure. A uh, couple hundred points. <laughs> yeah, I wish it was a couple hundred. 42 in 60 games, That's and he had two more in playoffs. So Absolutely solid. And then, solid. Uh, the one and there, where, may, there may be some news coming up yeah, on him. Yeah, we'll yeah. See. I kind of fumbled the ball a little bit with Patava. Uh, didn't amount to expectations with uh, that young man. I think I picked him based on the – Comments that were made at the uh, team meeting beginning of the year. Yes, said he'd stand up for his guys and so forth and so on. Well, not not okay. calling him a bad guy. He just he just he was injured and he he wasn't what we hoped he would be, and yeah. he ended up getting traded. And uh, that's sometimes the the hockey business. I uh, I have to go with Chad though too. I had Patava as well as one of my three players, so uh, we both had the same thought. He's going off to Air Force next year. Uh, I guess just wasn't quite the right fit for our team here, but still a still a heck of a player. He's on a Robertson Cup playoff team, so yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously it was still a good year for Patava. Next year he's off to college. Uh, let's see, two more of mine. I had John Zimmerman uh, focused kind of more on the long term aspect of him. I thought he'd be an immediate contributor, uh, which he was, but compared to the core that we had, it was 
really impressive. We kept saying that in the preseason, and that held true. The whole decor uh, is D1. Yes. It's a D1 all-star team. Yes. And, and Zimmerman doesn't have his D1 commit yet, but he's got another year. But he's got another year. And, and he was alternate captain, so I highlighted one of the captains, I guess, that, that he'll came get one. to be. He fought. He blocked shots. Yes. What more do you want? Yes. You're definitely the team guy. And then uh, Oscar Andron was my third. Okay. I think uh, he, and he hit a home one, run on that, that one. That one was a – yeah. That one's – we nailed that one. BU commit. Uh, and it was his turn to take over. And BU out of left field. He, yeah, big time. <laughs> Couldn't I remember, believe that. I remember when the team came back from the bus trip, and uh, Walt and I drove back, and Dan's like, oh, did you hear the news? Uh, what are you talking about, Dan? Uh, Andrew's going to Boston. Uh, excuse me? <laughs> Here's me. I think Walt was – you were back in Philly I was then, home, right? yeah, yeah, I, yeah. That's right. I text you, and I'm like, I was fed up. I'm like, this is ridiculous. They're, they're announcing a college commitment like 1 a.m. on a <laughs> Friday yeah. or Saturday, whatever. And then uh, we got we got Walt three players to watch here. Yeah, of course. Uh, it was one of those where back in the beginning of the season, we were all focused as to who was going to be the goaltender. We brought in Connor O'Brien, Gunnar Rivers, and Darian Hansen. And for some reason, I was sold on Connor O'Brien. I think I, you know, can say with good reason at the time there was no Corbin Kaspersky in the picture. But my first one to watch was Connor O'Brien, and I think that worked out. Uh, well, you got it right. He was the one of the three. Right, right. He was the one of the three to come out, and not to discredit Rivers. He bounced around with Odessa and Minot this year, and then Darian Hansen announcing his college commitment to Union College and spending the year with the Aston Rebels. But O'Brien was the one to come out of those three. Uh, yeah. Kaz joined the mix a couple weeks later. And then my second one was Sean Giles, who, granted, at the time, I'm still a little bit impressed with myself here because I was here for about two weeks, and I said he was going to be the captain because he seemed confident. And sure enough, a couple months later, he was named just that. And then my forward to watch was Tomas Breka. I uh, was just absolutely enthused with his size back during the preseason early going. I remember he had an absolute bomb of a slap shot goal in the preseason. I was like, holy cow, this kid can get behind it. But uh, unfortunately, you know, he missed, a, I believe it was two weeks or two months, two weeks and two days after being cut by the skate down there in Corpus Christi. But he certainly made his impact felt as being the biggest man with size on the team. He could always drop the gloves, and I think he played a vital part. Again, we're still waiting where he will be next year, but very excited to see, and I think Tomas was a valid part of this team this season. No, I, I like Tomas, and, uh, you know, Dan and I, Wal Fong, we talked this morning. We were kind of just shooting the breeze around the office, and uh, – he had high things to say, high praise to say about um, Tomash that, uh, you know, he he's almost a point-of-game player. And when you miss basically half the year to an injury, that's pretty impressive. I mean, he did he did one thing that I would say it's hard to do. Okay, picture yourself as a uh, guy from Czech who's over to America for the first time. You're injured where you can't skate. If that was me, I would probably balloon up by 20 pounds because I'd, <laughs> I'd be eating Tex-Mex every day and, and, you know, sitting around. So he, he stayed in shape, and he yeah. got on the ice actually before he probably was supposed to. Um, and he worked his ass off, and, you know, good on him. Well, he came back, too, and he was uh, – he actually had a couple of really good weeks uh, right right after the injury, and he was pretty consistent the rest of the year. So if they got that out of break, at least was a consistency standpoint – and it uh, looks like there might be a couple of new uh, imports next year now. So, yeah, out, I guess out with the old, sadly, in with the new. Uh, we'll focus on that in future podcasts. But uh, before we switch gears here, uh, Robertson Cup predictions are going to be coming up. Rather than doing it and uh, wasting our valuable time on the podcast, we will check that on LoneStarBrahmas.com later this week. Chad, me, and Walt will voice our opinions on that. So tune into LoneStarBrahmas.com to check out our predictions. Uh, and then be sure to join the conversation, too, on social media. Uh, but let's let's go to Walt now. I know it's his first year of juniors. Chad prefaced it. Just want to hear uh, your overall take of your year one in Bromland. Yeah, very, uh, very grateful and thankful, obviously, for the experience this year. It was more than I could have ever imagined. Uh, I still can't believe that when I reached out, it was just a blind email last summer. Uh, a kid from Pennsylvania wanted to move nearly 2,000 miles away just to be an intern. I'm sure you guys were like, what the heck is this kid's yeah. deal? All right. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, sure enough, you guys, you know, you gave me the time of day, and uh, we spoke on the phone for over an hour. I remember the first time we did, and I was like, all right, you know, maybe this can actually work out. And It was one of those times, too, where I'm in college, and I was like, wow, am I really about to move across the country and <laughs> live by myself just for a largely unpaid internship? And, right. Uh, but, you know, I, it was one of those – suppose I took a chance on myself and you guys took an even bigger chance on me and 
uh, worked out. I would have never imagined that things would have worked the way they did. I was here for the first few weeks, and I was loving it. And then opening night rolled around, and I showed up in a suit covered in $100 bills, and everyone was like, oh, man, who in yeah. the world is this kid? I was like, that's my guy right there. <laughs> 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 that's the guy who's going to But get you know what? I mean, the, the largest reason behind doing it was that I understood that Bromland was such a tight-knit community, and – uh, everyone knew everyone for the most part, so I had to find a way to stick my neck out and right. get involved in the mix. And, uh, you know, it worked on that opening night because I remember I developed some relationships with people who I uh, still talk to this day here in Bromland. Even some of the players at that time on opening night, I hadn't really had a conversation with some of them. But then uh, as I was down and around the arena, some of the guys were like, that is awesome. And uh, it really helped develop my relationship with not only the tremendous fans here in Bromland, but everyone else. And from there, you know, I, Nick, we really didn't know what role I was going to be able to assist right. you in. I just figured I'd come down here and right. lend a helping hand in any way, shape or form <laughs> possible. I knew I wanted to work in the hockey media industry. Um, and then, you know, you somehow I got you to let me on air with you. And I think it worked out a little bit. Uh, we had some great times this year and Figure we had some great road trips and everything. Yes, so I'm very yes. overall uh, grateful and thankful. Again, far and away, uh, more than I could have ever expected this year. And I couldn't extend enough thanks to everyone within the Brahms organization, from the players being kind enough, coaching staff, everyone within the front office staff. Uh, everyone's made it a great experience here, and I couldn't have asked for a better first year within the industry. Well, here's a good laugh for you too, Walt. Uh, I, I want to start first by just saying, obviously, how awesome it's been to work with you and the friendship you and I have just grown just from uh, being down in the sales office with Chad the whole time. Now we're moved up to our new office, and look at us. Three of us are still on the podcast. What, yeah. about 12 more, 13? I think it's our 13th or 14th episode together, so eh, we're surviving. Um, but obviously love, love what you've done with the fans here and, and how much fun you and I have been able to have. And hopefully the fans have enjoyed it as much. Uh, but here, here's the funny thing that you don't know before you got down here. I remember, uh, we had that conversation, Chad and I were very excited, but obviously I'm sure you thought we were skeptical too. And we're like, oh, is yeah. this, is this a dumb move? Like <laughs> we were like, what happens if he comes down here and this kid's just terrible? Like, do we blaze him? <laughs> well, it's, it, it. It's just weird. Like in sports, when you, when you bring somebody down from out of state or somewhere, um, you know, there's a lot of risk. Like if it doesn't work out, then they're stuck here. They, I, I don't like to see people spend a lot of money on an apartment lease, all that all that business. I mean, right. even with you, Nick, there's, right. there's no, it's true. when you're coming down, there's a little bit of um, uncertainty. So it's fantastic when it works out. And, uh, you know, sometimes in life you do have to take a chance. Right. And uh, – we love to keep things local here with the Brahmas. We like uh, as many local sponsors as we can get, you know, local fans and stuff. Um, but sometimes it's good just kind of cast a line out there and s see what else is out there. And uh, so uh, glad that Walt worked out and um, it wasn't all for naught. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least you got some good experience out of it too. But you, you kind of mentioned uh, – Wanting to stay local, I guess that segues us to a little bit of a new segment. Uh, looking ahead to next year, we're going to get into this a lot this off season. We'll try to keep it at a bi-weekly schedule as much as possible, uh, minus all the travel and other shenanigans that we have to do uh, this summertime. But uh, I guess first thing, I look at our whiteboard here in our, in our oh podcast boy. room, and we already have a potential list up of forwards and defensemen and goaltenders for next year's team. Uh, obviously, just from the tenders, the potential guys that can come back. Uh, right now, the Brahmas have uh, what could be uh, – well, I guess when you play – I guess it came added up because some players already came in and played for us. Like uh, tender Jordan Timmons was a guy who, who practiced with us. Obviously, uh, you know, we have like Joseph Berg who played four games with us as an affiliated player. Will he come back? Is he on the list? So there's some moving pieces, but it looks like there's – there could be quite a few that do return around the same as what returned this past year. Uh, so that will be exciting to see. One of those local guys, John Zimmerman. Another local guy at Troy York. So there's two local entities that could be back for next year's team uh, with one more year of junior hockey eligibility. And, again, we'll dive into those players later. But uh, some of them already getting drafted in the United States Hockey right. League, Tier 1 hockey, uh, which, uh, you know, fans are aware of. A.J. Vanderbeck, Johan Steen, Jacob Nahama, uh, just some of the names. Uh, Paul Frigo. Um, man, who else went up oh, there? God. There, 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 there are a couple a more. 
I you mean, know, they're always moving up and down. Jo- yeah. uh, Donovan Gardner, I think, did. Donovan Gardner did. Donovan Gardner, and he went on to attend, most people don't know, the New York Islanders uh, rookie camp after the 13-14 season. So, so everybody always moves up from Bromley, which is – that that's what we want to do. Um, but you, you look at it, and a uh, big shout-out to our tenders, Jordan Timmons and Dalton Messina. Timmons, a first-round draft pick. Unbelievable. To Muskegon. Uh, Jeff Potter recruited him, knew of him back from his days coaching in Pittsburgh. So we'll see what happens with Timmons. But obviously, congratulations to him if and, he goes to the USHL. And for our fans, that means he'll go to their camp. He'll be, yes. He'll be in their training camp. If he makes the team, then, then obviously he's off our list. He, we don't see him, but we still have his rights. So if something happens later in the year. True. He come back to us, True. Which, which is um, which happens, especially it, when you look at guys like Timmons and Messina who are 18 years old and they're absolutely. still developing, and maybe they just need that one extra year. And Bromeland's the perfect fit for it. So I, I guarantee you, Dan and Jeff have already talked with uh, all the coaches in the USHL for those drafted. Uh, Dalton Messina as well, second round draft pick to Fargo, huge, huge one for him as well. Those were both uh, top 25 overall picks in the ushl drafts a big shout out there darian hansen who walt mentioned earlier our former brahma uh off to union and off to youngstown as well he was drafted uh, by the phantoms so big pipeline with brahmas and Uh phantoms i know he wasn't with our team then but big shout out there and also joseph berg to omaha uh in the fifth round so fourth and final player with ties to the brahmas this year going to the ushl uh omaha's camp actually i heard is before brahma's draft so Interesting. We will know kind of where he's going to be. Well, and talk about Youngstown. Well, that's where Giles was pra- practicing this yes. year, right? So a lot of people yes. don't know when we were having those off weeks. OB was there. Um, Estes yeah. is owned by them too. Uh, OB is like the number three goalie for Youngstown. And uh, Giles, th- those guys practiced there a little bit this year. And had uh, Giles he not had his commitment to Robert Morris, there's a better – Better than zero chance he'd be playing for Youngstown, the USHL next year. So, right. Also, the sorry, I, I missed one too when I said local. Brandon Estes, obviously, another local one. Right. Kind of breezed over <laughs> that, but honestly, kind of. I mean, obviously, I'd like to have him back in Bromeland, but for his career too, you almost want to see him at Youngstown. That's where his rights are owned, and uh, they lost a lot of D men, so he might have a chance to slide in right away and be a big contributor there yeah, as well. You, so. you want to see him play it, but the thing that we hate to see is if someone goes up and then they're the fifth, sixth, seventh D man and they don't get a lot of ice time. Right. Whereas here they'd be, you know, 25 minutes a game. Right. It's, uh, I don't know. It's bittersweet, I guess. I don't know if that's the word. No, I, no, I think it is. But yeah. I mean, cause you want them to come here and you want them to here, succeed, but, but right. you, you also want to be greedy and keep them here so that we can succeed. <laughs> And obviously all the league is kind of going around with uh, trying to add their final team. Seven teams next year in the South Division. Yep. Uh, add Shreveport. Everybody else staying put. Glad to see uh, no crazy shenanigans with Topeka like last year. Witchy. And obviously Wichita Falls re-up, so that's big. Yeah, and so I had kind of made kind of a funny comment to our coaches this week saying uh, – you know, Shreveport's going to be a good punching bag for us in that first half of the year while they try to figure it out. And, <laughs> and they made – they were like, no, no, no. It's They have tenders. They have several players that we right. were looking at. They have um, – They got them from their new, like, NHL Futures camp. And stuff. Yeah, and they, they have the foundation for what could be a great team. They have dedicated scouts that have NHL experience. Um, so I don't expect that team to be just a, a gong show right from the start. I think that they're gonna they're gonna kind of hit the ground running there, and they've got a as we've mentioned on this podcast before, an amazing fan base. So uh, look out for Shreveport with seven teams in the South. I think it's awesome because you can't just you know sleep your way through the regular season and make the playoffs like that. What's that division? Uh, is it the Northeast, East? Which one has uh, only four teams? But, oh, the East. What yep. a joke. Well, there's five now. Oh, okay. With the general. So they're, awesome. they're getting there. So, yeah. <laughs> but, yes, agreed. It's like uh, – need more than four. We uh, – one thing, we don't need to beat a dead horse, but <clears throat> I wish the Robertson Cup format would just pick a freaking format and stick with it. Uh, this changing it up every year is driving me crazy. I remember um, in the CHL days, Central Hockey League days, they were dead set on having eight teams in the playoffs – and um, the thing about having eight teams in the playoffs, it's great when you've got 18 or 14 teams in the league, 
But one year we had nine teams in the Central Hockey League and eight teams make the playoffs. It's like, really? God, it sucks to be that ninth team. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like, oh, yeah, you How do really you miss bad. the playoffs? All you have to do is literally just – Beat one – not be the slowest. Win 25% <laughs> of your games. But uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think that there's – um, with another team coming into the, the South next year, there will be uh, an increase in the compete factor. Well, and, Walt, uh, Walt and I were talking about this at the lunch the other day. Um, the, all these leagues now want to go up to that 30 number. Yeah. They all, I mean, obviously it's because of like NHL, right, Walt? With, sure, you know, right. Everybody wants to be one-to-one -one with ECHL, AHL, NHL. But Makes sense. I wouldn't be shocked if like the NHL figures, well, 30 or maybe in like uh, – actually 30 I guess would be a pretty solid number. Uh, just have you know, because you cut that up in four divisions. I'd like to see it get to thirty, and I'd like to see them increase their uh, foreign number. Maybe go from four to six foreign players, because eventually you keep increasing the number of teams, and you muddy down the waters a little bit. That's true. But um, actually, that might help too, because there's a lot of players that want to come overseas to play here, oh and yeah. I'm sure there's <laughs> thousands that don't even that can't just because there's no spot. We had already heard rumblings as to teams that nearly got into the NHL for next season. And then when you take a look with the NA3HL and NA3EHL merging, I mean, that league could have potentially, they're projected at 47 teams next year. And granted, a few wow. will likely fold, or maybe they might even add a few more. But regardless. 32-team <laughs> playoff. Right, yeah. <laughs> God, stinks to be that bottom 15. Oh, um, March Madness all over again. But that's one of those things where the Northeast Generals were, an NA3 EHL organization last year. So that just opens the door for a couple of these 47 teams to potentially slide into the North American Hockey League. Sure, that will be a process, and it's going to be intriguing to see how Northeast does next season, but it certainly does leave that door open. So also talking about next season um, and getting back to the local vibe here, um, we are – here in Brahmaland, are going to go through some arena upgrades. And, you know, every year we do some minor things around here. Most of the time it goes unnoticed. Things like fan, uh, fans, fa things like painting <laughs> certain sections, um, a little bit of paint here and there, maybe adding some uh, sticky type, um, I don't know, almost like a Velcro type substance to the steps so it's they're a little bit more sturdy, you know, little things like that. But this year we're going to go through a pretty major arena upgrade uh, overhaul. We're redoing the ice uh, late this summer, and that's going to involve uh, an overhaul in the ice plant. So when the, the boys come in and start training camp, it'll be on a fresh sheet of ice, new sponsor logos underneath there. It'll all look uh, amazing. Um, we're also getting the boards refaced, which – Nice. Does, doesn't mean much to the fans, but, you know, over the years, we have hockey here from 5 in the morning until 1 in the morning, pretty much seven days a week. and uh, On two rinks. On two rinks, and they take a beating. So in the main rink, we're going to get the boards refaced, which will make them nice and smooth. Uh, any of the spots that um, may be uh, wonky, maybe warped, or just completely beaten down from having skates and pucks hit them and, and whatnot are going to be smoothed out. So it's going to look That's uh, awesome. fresh and solid. And then um, we've got a, uh, a new equipment deal in the league. Is Bauer is the uh, yes. official equipment provider now for the North American Hockey League, which most fans won't even pay attention to it. Um, it just means that uh, our gloves, pants, helmets, and uh, sticks are all going to be Bauer next year, which is great for the players because I think most of them – come in you know when they come in in uh, the summertime most of them are using Bauer gear anyway Bauer for those that don't know is um, I guess the hockey brand of Nike Bauer's owned by Nike am I right on that I think I'm right on that I think so um, so yeah so and that's a very popular brand in uh, in Europe so not to knock Easton but it's just cool to have a change every now and then we've been yeah, with Easton we were with Easton with the Central Hockey League and then the North American Hockey League so Switching it up there. Um, we hear rumblings, and I say it every year, and it never really happens, but this year I feel strong with everything going on about um, adding in a party deck type area to the arena. Uh, we had a sponsor meeting this morning with a local company, which will have to remain nameless for now, about um, potentially uh, 
building a little party deck, which what does that mean for the fans? I don't know yet. It's another suite type option. Right. Maybe uh, somewhere to have live bands during post game skates. That would be uh, that'd be really cool. A fun thing to do. Um, so who knows? So, spice up a little bit. Yeah, and then uh, also we're, we're working on getting a LED lighting in here, which would mean it'd be a game changer because right now. I mean, how many people asked you guys during the season, <laughs> why don't you turn the lights off? That's my uh, qu know. questionable fan voice. Why don't you turn the lights off and do some sort of laser show? <laughs> and have smoke come out of a bullhorn. And yeah, and I mean, <laughs> heck yeah. The reason is because it takes 20 minutes for the lights to come on fully. Right. They're the uh, the kind. You can tell I'm not an electrician, and I don't know the term. <laughs> the term That's I'm okay. You say it. They're know. like the kind that slowly, slowly come on. So – by having LED lights in there, we would basically have install this thing called IOL lighting. You guys know what IOL lighting is? Heck no. Instant on lighting. Oh, nice. I stole that from uh, Arthur 2, Arthur on the Rocks. <laughs> you guys see Arthur back in the day? You're too young for no, Arthur. No, I watch Arthur. Dudley Moore? I you know what I'm lost. talking about, Walt? You lost? No, I'm Arthur? God. Oh, Arthur, yeah, Kids sure. These yeah, days. yeah, yeah, yeah. I can get you a little bit of that. Arthur 2 on the Rocks. He's renting an apartment because he's poor now and uh, – in the paper, it says it has IOL lighting. And Arthur goes, what's IOL stand for? Instant on lighting. So that's what we're hoping for in the arena hey next year. IOL lighting. <laughs> we'll put that. We're going to put that in all our <laughs> literature. <laughs> People are going to be like, what are they talking about? What also, talking? you guys are uh, you're working on revamping the team store a little bit. Yes, that's going to need an overhaul this summer. Um I, 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 we know everybody's always asking, are we going to have, like, scarves? Are we going to have mittens? Are we going to have different hats or headgear? Yes. Sweaters, all. everything. And, and we totally understand, uh, it, you know, this year was a learning process. So mm -hmm. we're going to try to improve on some things with that aspect. But uh, poor Corinne down in the front office is dealing with 90,000 other things. So uh, <laughs> not saying the store is the last thing, but it's just another piece of the puzzle. Uh, so that that's going to get revamped, and then we're going to try to merge that with our online store now to give you more selection, and then you get the actual things that would come from the Nitec Sports Shop at our facility, uh, not from uh, one of our sponsors basically shipping everything out to you, which we had a couple of uh, – a lot of good things, which was fantastic, but obviously a couple of hiccups, and those hiccups we want to avoid for future seasons. So – Agree. That would be nice. Also, uh, a little taste as well uh, from a new store to a new website. Oh, Lone yes. Star Brahma's website going on there? is uh, going to be fine. But uh, the juniorbrahmas.com and nitechsports.com is getting a big overhaul, and uh, that should be coming out within the month. So keep an eye on those URLs. It'll be definitely a new experience on those two websites. You know, Thanks we, to uh, Lee and Frank and everybody else. Yeah, you know, we were talking before we went on air about – uh, apps and uh, Twitter and things like that. I mean, I think that the website is slowly going away from its usefulness. I mean, I don't know. What do you guys think? I will follow it up and say yes, only because Nick and I have compiled some statistics here just from the uh, – oh, What a great segue. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, everyone, uh, everyone's like, you know, what's going on with the website? Uh, how much does social media really play a factor? Uh, just to give those a bit of a taste, back during September, which was my first full month here, and Nick and I were still feeling everything out, we reached a total of 50,876 people just via Facebook alone. You can just about double that from Twitter. But 50,000 people, not too bad, a little bit over about 1,000 people per day. That's awesome. Um, but as of April, we reached 174,371, so over tripling our production on social media this year. So... People do pay attention. I think we wow. found that out. But they pay attention to social media. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I think that the only – well, not the only, but the main useful function of the website is uh, directing people to purchase tickets. And, and recaps and long-form stuff that yeah, we can't yeah. post straight to social media. I mean, eventually I, – I don't know. Looking into a crystal ball, could websites eventually go away in form of just straight apps? Who knows? That'd be interesting. Well, speaking of that, while we're on it, before we segue to uh, NHL, finally released the app oh, yeah. uh, for hey the hey so league websites out. So you can get that on, on the uh, Google Play with the Android market or uh, with the App Store with iTunes. So check that out. I think you just all you have to type in is NAHL. Uh, also, North American Hockey League would find it too. 
and uh, that will be a new app, new experience. At least it's better than searching a web browser, um, but obviously I'm sure that's a work in progress too from the league, but big shout out to them getting that out. Yeah, uh, and then I, people have asked me, speaking of websites and things of that nature, when are season tickets on sale? Uh, they're on sale now. We've just uh, we've restructured a few things. Um, we had we always had five price levels: glass club, plaza, mezzanine, terrace. What we're doing this year and for the future, we're eliminating the mezzanine. So it doesn't really mean anything. It's not like that seating area is just going to be picked up and dumped in the trash or anything. <laughs> it's uh, we're eliminating that term and we're just going to make the mezzanine seats uh, terrace seats. Um, it won't affect pricing or anything. Um, pricing for game day pricing, it's going to fluctuate. There's, you know, plaza seats are going to go down, terrace and glass are going to go up. All in all, it's going to be, you know, a seamless right. hic- hiccup. And then uh, special shout out to uh, our fan of the year. Wh- wait, Walt's got his hand up. Nope, shout out fan of the year. Shout out fa- fan Fall of the year. Shoot. So last year was the first fan of the year award, which we presented to. Mr. Keith Hendon, and I got my Keith Hendon reference in. Got to keep doing that every episode. Uh, So Keith Hendon won for going thousands of miles, all the way to Wenatchee, Corpus Christi, Topeka. He he got those wheels rolling last year, and he got the ink flowing as well with the Brahmas, Lone Star Brahmas tattoo with all everybody's autographs. Um, It was a clear cut winner for Fan of the Year this year. It was such a crowded field. I mean, so many people went on road trips so many people showed up to every little event we yes. had whether it was you know I, I don't know something at a local restaurant or whatever right uh, all over it um fans showing up for games two and three hours early i mean staying an hour late fans are really great this year and it's appropriate because it was year of the fan but there was one miss uh vicky buckingham who kind of uh rose to the top as we started talking about it. She had a lot of major health issues this year and uh, a lot of setbacks uh, on the health front. And one thing that she still wanted to do was come to Brahma hockey games, um, come into practices, that kind of thing helped cheer her up. So, you know, when you, when you get – nothing is worse than getting, you know, bad news from a doctor. Right. Um, so to have someone come to the Brahma's practice and just sit and watch – Dan yell at the guys and <laughs> run through drills to have that cheer somebody up. Uh, it's awesome. And to have the resolve to keep fighting through uh, and keep showing up uh, game after game, you know, regardless of what all's going on or whether you're in a wheelchair or whatever. Uh, that's what the fan of the year is all about. Just, uh, just like the, the hockey players, they play through a lot. Right. I mean, uh, Breka wanted to go back out after having surgery like the I next know. game, didn't he? So it's <laughs> that spirit is with Unreal. the fans as well. So, Congratulations, Vicky. And here, here's a little anecdote about Vicky and her daughter, Gina. Not to make this long podcast longer, but mm-hmm. in the year uh, 2012, when we had a really terrible piece of uh, poo-poo owner who, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't think it's any secret there. That was our last year in the Central Hockey League. Uh, our jerseys came in. We didn't order jerseys till November. So, yeah. Season started in October. We didn't actually order the Brahma's game jerseys till November. That tells you how uh, together he had it. <laughs> when they came in in January, the guys were tired of wearing these, basically these practice jerseys that had some uh, letters crudely sewn on them. I mean, they were they were straight-up men's league jerseys. So anyway, these jerseys, game jerseys come in, and, of course, just classic on par with everything else that was going on that year, no fight straps in them. <laughs> No fight straps. So our equipment manager went to uh, the local embroidery store, and they only had two fight straps. Oh, yeah. He called uh, Sudsy, the equipment manager of the Dallas Stars, and Sudsy had two. So now we're up to four. <laughs> we're getting there. And it was like, these guys really want to wear these jerseys, and the other jerseys were falling apart. And uh, Gina and Vicky had about 60 to 100 game-worn jerseys in their collection. Uh, from the years going back to the Fort Worth fire, they actually took a thread puller and removed fight straps from like 15 jerseys so that we had enough that we could sew on and uh, play with those jerseys until fight straps arrived and we get it all fixed. So that's basically 
taking game worn jerseys and destroying their value for the good of the team. So big ups for that. They didn't get enough press for that that year, but uh, that's just the kind of things that uh, right. these fans do. Next year, someone be a clear cut winner. I know. I know. <laughs> well, it's not a prep. It's not even too like next year is like that year. Everything kind of goes into effect, but obviously, ultimately, that season determines the fan of the year. Um, and I agree, it was tough. We we talked for days about it. <laughs> just like random short meetings, we're like ah. Band of the year's coming up. Like who's who's yeah. the front runner? We had a little leaderboard and yeah, kind of worked it out and had man, how many voices? Probably in that ten at least. It was like in it, picture in golf if coming down the the final <laughs> nine holes on Sunday if, if eight guys are tied at ten under par. It's true, That's basically what it was. It was very true, and it was it was that was almost a game time decision too. Not really, but well, you guys over- vetoed me. I was like, we just make everybody fan of the year and give them all a little card. And y'all were like, that's a stupid idea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, you can't, can't do it too many, right? But that's good. So we look forward to next. Oh, yeah. Nick's uh, pointing to a picture of, of Mongo. We have some bad news to report about Mongo. Mongo suffered a <clears throat> an injury in uh, skating training last week. Suffered a uh, torn rotator cuff and a uh, – Severely pulled hamstring. We're not sure if Mongo's going to be able to go next year. So we may have a new mascot as Mongo uh, recovers from his injuries. Pretty brutal. Poor, you ever seen a bull fall Mongo. that hard? I'm surprised at that. I saw the pictures, and that's, <laughs> man, that's what I was showing you. That's... I mean, whew. <laughs> so, yeah, we're, we might have a new mascot. Mongo may be uh, medically retired if he's unable to return to duty. So oh, man. We'll see about that, and which means another mascot naming contest. Ooh. Oh, you weren't here for that, were you? No, right no, you right, right before me. Okay. But I heard all the, I heard oh, all yeah. the hoopla. Oh yeah, I can't, <laughs> I can't wait to see the great names that uh, our fans pick, and terrible names that people like me throw into the mix. <laughs> we'll have some good ones. What else you got there, Walt? Closing thoughts. It's that time. Oh man. Um, well, this is our season end, then yeah, it was a. Uh, Don't one, cry, it's okay. One heck of a ride. It's okay, buddy. <laughs> Getting emotional over here. Uh, uh, it, it was all good things. So looking forward to doing this again in two weeks. Yeah, agreed. I I got emotional on the last broadcast at the end there. <laughs> Did it you? Was, yeah. Uh, it's tough. It's tough. It's a long season. We're we're all invested, fans alike, us as well. Everybody's invested in the year. Obviously, we know it ended up a little short, but it's still a great year. I was uh, I was just so mad at the time it was built up. I was I had so much hope, and I know the fans did too. And then it was just a tough loss again in overtime, back to back years to eliminate the season. It's like, oh, you were right there. But we did that to Topeka last year. We just no, it's true. We ripped their heart out in overtime, and we made it worse because they didn't even know if they had a team. True, they, that might have been the last what year. Did, what did Giles the game winner in overtime? Yes. Yeah. Giles had the game went. It was actually Just an exact. Jabbed a knife right in their heart. <laughs> <laughs> it was an exact duplicate of last year, but reverse. Yeah. Literally the same thing. It was a four game series. Topeka won 3 1. Last year, four game series. We won 3 run. Last year, games two and four went to overtime. Brahmas won it. This year, games two and four went to overtime. Topeka won them. It's nuts. Crazy. So obviously, meant to be. Uh, congrats to the Roadrunners. The good season. They're done. Yeah. Wildcats are the South uh, regular season and postseason champions. They are off to the Final Four, the Robertson Cup semifinals in Minnesota. And again, we will have our predictions coming for you this coming week on LoneStarBrahmas.com. Uh, and then that will kick off our end of this year. And then all things will be pointing to next year. We'll try to get some guests in as well uh, this summer on the podcast to spice up a little bit. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Undefeated in 2017. Let's go. <laughs> Shout hey, out Mark Reepy and Tom Hart. Shout out to Mark Reepy and Tom Hart and Newman Arango. Yep. Those three are the backbone. I'll if, just felt like I needed to deserve a little no, bit. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Got to give them a little shout out. All right. What else we got? Anything? Well, episode 25 in the books. In, in the books? It's in the books. All right. Well, it's been a heck of a season, guys. And uh, I'm glad to do this podcast with you two every day. For the viewers, all of you guys tuning in religiously, we appreciate the love. Uh, definitely stay connected with us. We'll, we'll give us some ideas too of who you want, maybe want to hear. Maybe you want to hear from uh, Estes or Zerman or, or York or somebody. And there is the farewell. So 25, adios. We'll see you in a few weeks.